Up next on Line TV, we will have Tristan Siebert with your Line of the Week, Lexi Farron with the Packs Over Bowling, Dakota Johnson with another discography segment, and me, Sam D, with some insight on how the coronavirus is affecting national sports. All that and more, Line TV starts now. Good morning, Cersei High School. I'm Mason Turney. And I'm Landon Stallnaker. Let's get right into some announcements. Seniors, there are lots of scholarship opportunities for you. The Ernest Whitelaw Don Kenny Scholarship, the Arkansas Association of Career and Technical Education Administrators, McLarty Drives Education Scholarship, First Electric Scholarship Program, Student View Scholarship Program, White County Farm Bureau, and many other local scholarships. If you're interested in any of these, there's lots of information waiting for you in the Guidance Center. All current 9th through 11th grade girls interested in trying out for the high school basketball team need to attend the tryouts which will be held in the Annex Gym March 30th through the 31st from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. All students interested need to fill out the, form, the tryout form found in both offices or from Coach Sensman. All needed information is found on the tryout form. You will have, to t you will have up until the start of the tryouts to turn in the form. Our school cafeteria will be celebrating National School Breakfast Week this week. This year's theme is School Breakfast Out of This World. There will be many new items offered on the breakfast menus, plus chances to win prizes daily. So, make plans to swim by the cafeteria between 7.30 and 8 o'clock this week to fuel up on, for your school day and join the celebration. Any juniors who par whose parents are members and or customers of First Electric is eligible to apply for an all-expense paid trip to the Electric Cooperative's Youth Tour to Washington, D.C. on June 19th through the 25th. Interested students can pick up information in the Guidance Center. The deadline to apply is March 13th. Last month, bowling season came to an end with your Lions winning at conference. Lexi Farron caught up with the conference champs to see how they did at state. Bowling is a sport that requires skill and strategy. The Cersei High boys bowling team went into state with a nearly spotless record. We caught up with the coach and one of the players to learn the in and outs of bowling and what it takes to come out on top. If you have never actually bowled, it is a very fun sport just to get out and experiment. To be a successful bowler, you have to dedicate a lot of time and effort into practicing. Like the saying says, practice makes perfect. We usually come in and we get loose and, and they'll turn on the lanes and we bowl four or five frames. We practice two days a week and I encourage guys to, they can either video or, or themselves bowling or else send me a copy of the scores uh, at least one more day a week. So, so guys usually on the lane like three days a week during the season. My favorite part of practice would just be, you know, with the team, just competing. And we don't get to bowl that much with the girls, like during matches and stuff. And so they're closer to us in practice. And, of course, my dad always makes a competition with me. With only one loss going into conference, the Cersei High boys bowling team put in a lot of preparation and hard work that paid off in the end. Going in, like I said, I had very high expectations for, for the guys, for sure. Um, and, and I told them, if, if we're anything short of conference champions, I feel like you let yourselves down. So the standards going in, the, the bar I set was pretty high for them. It's, uh, I knew what they was capable of doing, and, and if we went out and put it together that day, we was going to be conference champions, and we was. We came in really hot, you know, a conference. We won conference championship, and that was really awesome uh, because that was my first time doing that with bowling actually, and so it was really fun. We bowled really, really well in conference. Even though Cersei did not come out on top at state, they still managed to do their best and place in the top five of all the other bowling teams in Arkansas. As a team, you have to finish in the, in the top four or else you have to finish in the top 10% of the bowlers that don't go to state. We thought we were gonna come in hot in state. You know, we lacked in some areas uh, and we just weren't quick and all at the right time. But overall, when we got in the top five, as you can see, bowling is a sport like no other. It is more relaxed and encouraging, but it still requires one to put in hard work and effort. As long as the Cersei High boys bowling team continues to work hard and stay positive, who knows, maybe they will be number one next season. 
Back to the news desk. Thanks, Lexi, for all of that valuable information. We definitely will be keeping up with them next year to see how they go. Several Arkansas universities have canceled study abroad programs in Italy amid fears of the spread of the COVID-19 virus. The University of Arkansas Fayetteville announced on Friday it was suspending academic operations at its Rome Center for the rest of the spring semester, and all of its American students there are returning to the U.S. Forty students have been studying at the Rome Center this semester, along with 60 students from the other schools. University of Arkansas Fayetteville spokesman John Thomas told the Arkansas Democratic Gazette. Scientists say that half of the world's sandy beaches could disappear by the end of the century if climate change continues unchecked. Researchers at the European Union's Joint Research Center in Ispera, Italy, used satellite images to track the way beaches have changed over the past 30 years and simulated how global warming might affect them in the future. What we find is that by the end of the century, around half of the beaches in the world will experience erosion. That is more than 100 meters, said Michaelis Valsdaukis. It is likely that they will be lost. Let's send things over to Josh Kermeens with our look at this week's forecast. Good afternoon, Cersei. I'm Josh Kermeens here with your weather. Let's take a look at it. Today will be a high of 62, 20% chance of rain. It'll be cloudy and your winds will be in north-northeast at 7 miles per hour. Your humidity will be at 65% and your sun rose at 6.31 a.m. this morning on to tonight. Tonight you have a low of 45. It'll be 20% chance of rain. It'll be cloudy skies and your winds will be going north-northeast at 6 miles per hour. And your humidity is at 74% and your sun will set at 6.05 p.m. On to the almanac. For your last seven day temperature, your high was a 73, a low of 26, a monthly average of precipitation was 0.01, and month to date was 0.31 inches onto the five cast. For Thursday, be partly cloudy with a high of 69, a low of 41, 20% chance of rain. On Friday, it'd be cloudy with a high of 61, a low of 35, a 0% chance of rain. On Saturday, it'd be low, mostly sunny skies, the high of 60, a low of 40, and 10% chance of rain. On Sunday, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 67, a low of 45, 10% chance. And then Monday, it'll be thunderstorms with a high of 67, a low of 45, and 60% chance of rain. Well, looks like there's going to be a lot of rain this upcoming week. Yeah, at least the temperatures will be getting up. It's not going to be cold. That is and true. It's going to be getting sunny and warmer. <laughs> that is yeah. true. Now let's see what we're having for lunch tomorrow. Popcorn chicken, dipping sauce, Italian combo wrap, sweet potato crunch, seasoned black eyed peas, whole grain breadstick, applesauce, milk variety, and raisins. Be sure to give our lunch ladies a big hug and high five for pre preparing our wonderful meals. I sure know I will. And they sure do put a lot of work into preparing those meals for us. For sure. Now we have Tristan Siebert with our line of the week. What's up, Cersei High School? It's your boy, Tree Dog, back with your line of the week, Macy Hall. So how are you, Mace? I'm doing pretty good. How are you, Tree Dog? I'm epic. So when did you start playing soccer? I started playing when I was three years old. That's awesome. So in Cersei, how often are practices? We practice every day during eighth period, and we stay until around 4 or 4.30 every day. Oh my gosh, so you guys are getting the best exercise possible. Oh yeah, we're, we're just putting that grind in daily. That's awesome. So what do you guys do in practice? We mostly work on ball work, we do shooting skills, scrimmage, just all that good stuff. That's awesome. Uh, what position do you play in soccer? I play left center back, left which center. is defense. So you're just hitting the ball away from him, I'm guessing? Yeah, we, I just kind of run up whenever a forward's coming up and just kind of intimidate him a little bit hmm. and then, you know, work, awesome. work my magic. I, I believe it. <laughs> And as a whole, is the team prepared for the season? I feel like we are. We've been doing really good scrimmaging, and we have some pretty powerful forwards this year, so I'm really excited about the season. Okay. That, practice, that practice is coming in handy. Oh, yeah, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. And what's something you're going to miss about the Cersei soccer team? I'm definitely going to miss messing with Coach Mack and Coach Stamps every day. So are you hyped to start playing in Lion College? I'm very, very hyped. We start summer ball this summer, actually. So you're trying to get the same relationship as your old coach and maybe mess with those coaches? Definitely. I've already had a pretty good connection with the head coach, so I feel like 
it's going to be an easy transition into college. That's good. That's good. Well, once again, I'm Tristan Siebert here with the fierce Macy Hall. <laughs> Let's send things back to the news desk. Thanks, Tristan. Let's send things over to Sam D to find out what's happening in our world of sports. Good afternoon, Cersei High School. In local sports, your boys and girls basketball teams finished up their season last Friday with the boys team bagging a win against Nelton, 73-60. We talked to Freddie Hicks to get his insight on this game. Well, my teammates make me look, uh, make me look pretty good. So they put me in position, I hit shots, and they do a lot of things that go unnoticed. But without like Griffin Love and uh, my other teammates, I wouldn't be able to do anything hardly. I uh, just want to say shout out to Griffin Love um, and the rest of the basketball team. Love them. The boys have finished up 11 to 15 overall, while the girls are 6 to 20. Both have trained and played very hard this year, so please congratulate them. Also, Demacio Whittier has signed to wrestle at Williams Baptist University. Congratulations. In national news, major North American professional sports leagues are talking to health officials and informing teams about the coronavirus outbreak that has led to the first reported death in the U.S. Officials from the National Basketball Association, National Hockey League, and Major League Baseball say that they are all consulting with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and other organizations on a regular basis about COVID-19. Many are now questioning if the 2020 Summer Olympics are still going to be held. The coronavirus has been reported in more than 60 countries and puts the Tokyo Olympics at risk. The Olympics are to open on July 24th, less than five months away. The Paralympics follow on August 25th. IOC President Thomas Bach, in an interview last week limited to Japanese media, said the IOC is fully committed to have the opening ceremony there on July 24th in Tokyo. He declined to speculate about a postponement, cancellation, or any combination of those possibilities. Bach told the Japanese, I'm not ready to add fuel to the flames of the speculation there is in any way. Well, Cersei, that's about all we have for your sports news today. Let's send it back to the news desk. Thanks, Sammy, for those sports updates. What's new in the music world, Taco? What's up, Cersei? I'm sadly back with another discography of. Today, we will look at a few albums that were released recently and are notable to me. First off, we have a collaborative effort project from Kenny Beats and Denzel Curry, 18 minutes and 8 songs. A small dose of Denzel for those who's missed him recently. Next up, we have King Cruel's Man Alive, a punch-drunk, neo-noir vibe is consistent through the project. But unlike his previous albums, this one is not all dark and gloomy, with the subject matter of the change between teenage love and adult responsibilities. We have Wayne's new project, Funeral. Funeral is the 13th studio album released by Young Money Entertainment. Wayne says that he likes the difficulty of trying to fit in and still stay relevant without talking about what he used to be. And lastly, we have Dan Deacon's Mystic Familiar, the first album by Dan Deacon in five years, and he shows no age. A manic and indie pop vibes with the subject matter of the nature of change and the mutability of it, using fast-paced melodies and abrasive uses of sound that end up to sound melodic. Well, that's all I have for this time. Back to the news desk. Thanks, Taco. I'm definitely going to check out some of those albums. Me too. Well, that wraps up some of today's episode of Lion TV. If you missed any episodes, be sure to go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to Cersei High Lion TV. And remember to follow us on Twitter at Lion TV, Instagram at Cersei Lion TV, and Facebook at Cersei High Lion TV. Signing off, I'm Mason Turney. And I'm Landon Stallnaker. See you Friday, Cersei.